It is my pleasure to introduce to you our Guatemala participants. They have just returned from an amazing trip of service and study in Guatemala, and they are here to share that experience with each and every one of us. So um, I would like to have them come up. I'd like to welcome you all here, and we are really excited to hear about your experiences and your stories um, in that beautiful country of Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Allison. Hi, my name is Allison Kielhold, and I was the co-director for the Guatemala Study and Serve Project um, this summer. And I just want to give you a little background on Sierra Service Project. It's the sister project of ASP, which is, was started in the Appalachian Mountain Range. Um, so Sierra Service is the West Coast version of the program, and they usually do domestic um, service projects over the summer on Indian reservations and now Los Angeles. Um, but the Guatemala trip is different. Um, it's our Right now it's our only Central American program, and uh, last year was the pilot year, so this was just our second summer doing it, but I think it was very, very successful. And it's different from the other SSP trips because it's 10 days in the country and you're not just doing um, home repair with the, the spiritual aspect, but you're also learning about the culture and the history of Guatemala and you do more, more activities to interact with um, the people that you're um, surrounded by. So in this trip, we um, were in different areas of Guatemala, so we traveled around. We spent three days by Lake Atiglan, and then we went to Shela, and then um, we spent the rest of our trip on a coffee farm in Santa Anita, a coffee plantation. Um, so that's it's a lot more focused on um, building the community with people there and getting to know them and how, how the, our lives are so different, but also how they're similar. Uh, my name is Colleen Antonison. Um, I This is my second Sierra Service project, and I've been part of Westminster Presbyterian Church for my whole life. Um, we're going to give you a little bit of an idea about the things we did during the day and also some of the history and culture of Guatemala. Um, but before I do, I want to let you know what an amazing experience this was for all of us. And um, without your help from the church and the congregation, I'm not sure all of us would be here telling you about it. So thank you for that. And um, so to start our day off in Guatemala, we started, we woke up at about 6.30 to get to breakfast around 7. And breakfast was made by a local Guatemalan woman or a few of them. And... Um, it was probably my favorite meal of the day. And um, and then after breakfast, we headed out to our work sites. Um, and our work sites included building adobe bricks for a local clinic they're building, um, helping families finish building their homes, clearing overgrown paths or patches of ground for gardens and trails. Um, we painted... Um, a museum and um, the inside of a school a school room and so and then during lunchtime one of the local women um, named Patrona would bring us lunch every day and um, and then we would stay at our work site until about two and then we would go inside because it it would rain at at the same time every day um, and we would do some educational visits inside. Um, we learned about how they do their paintings, how they do their weavings, how they dye their fabric. Um, a lot of cool things. We heard life stories from a few of the local people. Um, and one was an ex-gorilla who moved to the United States and, and deported himself back to, to open a cafe for people like himself who were deported back to Guatemala. So we met some really cool people, um, and after that we would have dinner usually around 7. And then at the end of the day, we would meet as a group 
and just recap our day. And um, also, we would lead in discussions about a book that we all read called Rigoberta Menchu, which is about a Guatemalan activist who um, is fighting for the rights of the indigenous people. So we definitely had a lot of fun during the day helping people out. Um, and here is Haley to tell you about the amazing food we had. Hola. Um, I'm Haley Antonison. This is my fifth SSP trip. My first time out of the country, though, which is pretty cool. Um, I wanted to tell you a little about the food that we ate in Guatemala. Um, being a vegetarian and also allergic to most things, I ate surprisingly well. Uh, we actually were completely spoiled by the people in Guatemala, um, every, by everybody who fed us. We ate beans, handmade tortillas, rice, fresh vegetables, fruit, sometimes even dessert. The meat eaters ate meat. <laughs> um, we ate things that most Guatemalans save for special occasions, like weddings or the birth of a child. So um, we were treated very well with food. Um, I would definitely go back to Guatemala, mostly for the guacamole. Uh, it was the best I've ever had. Thanks to SSP and our congregation uh, for supporting us and helping us go on this life-changing trip to Guatemala. So thank you. Hi, I'm Kiana Hargreaves, and I get to tell you about the beautiful landscape. Um, Guatemala actually has like 33 different volcanoes, and we were lucky enough to pretty much see one every day. Um, for the first part of our trip, um, we were around the lake, and um, every day you'd see this huge volcano, and then um, in the evening, the clouds would just roll in over it and then just start pouring. The first day we were there, um, a lot of us went exploring of the town, and we went out on this little, like, dock, and it was around, like, two or three, and um, and all the little kids started, like, coming in, and we're just like, what's going on? And then it just started pouring down rain. And in Guatemala, when it starts raining, it's just dumping buckets on you. So the little kids grabbed our hands and took us under a little shelter thing, and then we're like, like you need to stay here. Like it's it's too much rain for you guys. And we're like, oh okay. It was just it was really great to see how everybody just interacted with the environment, and it was just beautiful because the people really worked with the um, with the weather and with everything around them. Um, for the second part of our trip, when we were at the coffee plantation, um, it was really interesting to see how the people like put so much work into the ground and into just everything. And they spent more time trying to make it organic. And it was really interesting to just see how well the people interacted with their environment. It was really great. Um, my name is Sarah Cornett, and um, I'm going to be telling you a little, bit, a little bit about the history and the culture that we were able to experience in Guatemala. Um, so one of the really interesting things that we were able to learn about was just the, the political and social history and, and the conflicts that Guatemala has faced over the years. And um, I don't think any of us really knew a lot about that, so it's interesting to learn firsthand from people who have lived through through um, through everything that's, that's gone on. Um, and we learned that um, Guatemala is split into into two um, into two, into two general ethnic groups, um, the the um, indigenous Mayan population, and there are there are dozens of of, of um, subsects of that with 23 languages, um, I think. And we we encountered um, in 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 the first town that that we stayed at um, in San San Juan, um, people spoke um, Zutuhio, which was their local Mayan language, and that was really interesting. We learned a few words, um, and um, and essentially in, in, in history it, it's often been the, the Mayan Indians pitted against the um the um Ladino population, which is comprised of, of people with, with Spanish blood who are often an um like a higher class population who typically control um the military and the government. Um and, and we were able to learn a lot we we were able to learn a lot about the 36 year long civil war that um plagued Guatemala from 1960 to 1996 um and uh, we were able to talk to people who 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 experienced the war firsthand and how the the military essentially um attempted to exterminate all of the um in, indigenous Mayans living in living in, in Guatemala and they account for 70% of the population so um it was quite quite a horrific um, thing to hear about, but um, 
but we were all very grateful for, for all that we learned. And, um, and even as we, um, talked to, to people on our, on our work site, they, they also talked, um, they also told us about the, the Mayan calendar and other Mayan practices. Um, one of, one of the men that, that we worked with named Miguel, um, brought in a copy of a Mayan story for us to read. And we were all, um, grateful to, to hear about that. And, um, so I think we all came away with feeling or feeling better informed about, um, the political history of, of Guatemala and, and, and just general Latin America and a lot of the common, common themes there. So it was, it was, um, difficult to, to learn about some of the horrific things that have gone on, but we were thankful, um, for the knowledge and hope to share it and bring it back. Hey everybody, I'm Allie. Um, I love Guatemala and my favorite part about Guatemala was the people. The women, they wore very beautiful colors and they were very beautiful and the men were hardworking and they were strong. And my favorite part about being in Guatemala is when we got to pair off and go to um, Native's house in Fatima. And we got to, we were served lunch by these people. Um, the lady whose house we went to, her name is Carmen, and she served us a really delicious lunch. Um, I asked about her skirt, which she called the corte, and it looks a lot like the skirt I'm wearing. Very similar. I also, I also asked her, she told me about her huipil, which is traditional Mayan blouse with a lot of embroidery on it. And she brought it out and she showed us and she held it up to herself like this and she danced around with it. Like you'd wear it to like um, a dance or a special occasion. So by the end of the day we had, there was at least half the neighborhood in Carmen's house yucking it up and having a really good time talking and stuff. And that was my favorite part about Guatemala. Um, I'm Chris. Um, when you go down there, you first see the amount of poverty in the countryside and throughout the whole, uh, country, um, you know, they live in two room houses. They're, they're not very big at all, not compared to anything we have. Um, and yet they still seem very happy with what they have and they put in a lot of hard work and they're able to do with what they have. Um, it really struck me on the flight from LAX to uh, Sacramento, how every row seemed to have a bright screen from an iPod, an iPad, a Kindle, and how fortunate and um, how much excess we seem to have um, throughout America. Um, and how everybody was in their own zone on the flight and how they weren't conscious of anything else other than them and their iPod. Um, but when you also go down there, you see that everybody else is more friendly and more aware of everything else. They greet you on the street. They say hi. Um, you feel like it's a more warm and positive attitude. Um, in which they bring uh, to their lives. So, um, and I think we have the ability to help these people um, because they often can't. And, you know, they, they work so hard and then they struggle so hard, yet nothing really seems to come from it. So um, that's what I saw in Guatemala.
as you can tell from listening to these young people um, about their trip, um, we are just so grateful to have them as part of the congregation and their willingness to go into um, a different part of the world and to come back and to share with us and to fill us with hope um, that young people, our young people and young people in the world today do care about what's happening. And when they came back, they were full of stories of fair trade coffee and what we could do and how maybe we can put some of our toys away and um, figure out a way in which to better be um, the hands and feet um, of Jesus Christ in the world. So we are just thrilled to have them as young ambassadors, really, and to spread the love and the faith. And they also um, presented us with a gift for our church here at Westminster Presbyterian, a beautiful handmade textile to adorn our communion table with and uh, just happens to be my favorite color. So I thank you for this beautiful gift, and I thank you for your willingness um, to do what so many people would have um, never even uh, asked a question about. But you not only asked the question, you um, put an exclamation point behind it. So amen, and thanks, and praise be to God. Thank you.